Mr. Gibson spoke about making inferences. If you look at my screen, you can see that I have six pictures on the screen. I want you to go ahead and infer the activity that I am participating in. If you notice, if you recall, making inferences requires you to use your prior knowledge of schema and the textual information. Today, the textual information is in the form of photographs. So I have six photographs. Awesome, you, I'm not even done. I'm at the airport, I'm taking a trip, I'm traveling. Awesome, I can't wait until I can do so in real life. So on this trip today, I'm flying on Bahamas Air. This is my summer vacation that I'm looking forward to. And I'm going to one of my favorite summer destinations. And that would be Orlando, Florida. So when I, when I get to Orlando, Florida, there are many activities that I am excited and interested in doing. I love shopping. Okay, my audio is kind of weird. Mr. Gibson, can you hear me? Is, is I can hear my... you, Claire. It may, it may be the student's computer. So. Okay. So when I get to Orlando, Florida, I'm looking forward to shopping, sightseeing, visiting the amusement park. But my most favorite thing to do is visit the restaurant. And there's one restaurant in particular in Orlando, Florida that I enjoy. And that restaurant is Golden Corral. How many of you have ever visited Golden Corral? Yes, I see Mr. Fawzi, I love Golden Corral. And it's, I don't love Golden Corral because it's a buffet restaurant. There's one specific menu item that they have that I cannot wait to get there. And it's not the fried chicken. Can you guess what it is that I, I'm looking forward to having when I get to Golden Corral? Not the seafood. Not the grill. It's something that you have at the end of your meal. I typically want to start off with that. Right, the strawberry chocolate thing. Right, the chocolate fountain. So I'm excited to get to the chocolate fountain. However, on this particular visit to Orlando, it was not working. It was out of commission. I was already ready, had my strawberries, my marshmallows, my rice krispie treats, ready to put under the chocolate fountain, and it was not working. So I asked the waitress, what's going on? Why is the machine not working? She was unable to give me an answer. And the restaurant was quite crowded at that time. And the manager was not available. So I was very upset. I had followed this long distance. And I could not enjoy this menu item that I love. So I, decided, I thought about it. Hmm, what can I do to, to ensure that this never happens again? Or that this doesn't happen to anybody else? So I, just, I said, maybe I should take out my cell phone and find Golden Corral on Facebook and maybe give them a poor rating. Or maybe I can post something on Twitter or maybe um, Instagram on their page. And then I thought about it a little further and I said, you know, maybe I, if I do that, they may not see it, one, and I may appear to be a disgruntled, staff, a disgruntled customer. So I thought a little bit more and I said, what else could I do? I said, you know what, let me write a letter to the managing director of Golden Corral to inform him about my bad experience and maybe suggest ways that he can direct it for future customers. So I want you to go ahead in your chat box and in the chat box and let me know which kind of letter am I writing to. Now remember, I'm writing to the managing director, not to my cousin, not to my mom, not to my friend. A complaint, a letter of complaint. And we've categorized it as right, a business letter. Awesome. So that's what we're going to look at today. And what's another name for the business letter? Oh, I see some of you have already posted it. A formal letter. Who can give me an antonym for the word formal? Remember, antonyms are words that are opposite in meaning. Awesome, Cherish, an informal letter. So today we're going to focus on the formal letter, which is the business letter, but the informal letter is known as the friendly letter. Our focus today, however, will be the business letter. 
So, what are our goals? What do we hope to achieve at the end of the, this lesson? We should be able to list and identify the parts of the business letter. We will also examine the structure of the business letter in the open format, and we're also going to address an envelope. So there are some tools that you're going to need to accomplish the ta these tasks today. What are the tools? Obviously, you're going to need your computer, tablet, or whatever mobile device you're using. You will need a folder sheet. You may sometimes hear your teacher refer to it as a loose leaf. You will also need a pen and a ruler. If you do not have a ruler, you can use any item that has a straight edge. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to, go to gather your tools. 30 seconds. And once you have them, just type yes in the chat box. And we can move on. Awesome. Good. So let's move on. We have our tools and we're ready to go. So what is this business letter? Well, a business letter is a professional message written to a business or an organization. When writing a business letter, it is important to use formal language. That means you're not going to use text language, WhatsApp language, LOL, DD, DDI, IDK, and all of those others. And you, you're not going to use dialectal or street language, Kona, Rana. What, what would be the standard way of, of writing Kona? What would be the standard English words for the word Kona? Going, it would be a verb phrase. Right. And you are not going to use contractions, such as don't. What two words are being contracted in the word don't? Awesome, Cherish. And your business letter must be clear and concise. And the word concise refers to keeping it simple and straightforward. So always remember K-I-F-S, KISS. Keep it simple and straightforward. So let's get into it. Now we know that letters have parts. A business letter has six parts. So if you look at the screen, I have two sentences on the screen. Each initial letter of each word in the sentence represents a part of the business letter. There are six parts of the business letter, but I have seven words. One word, however, is in parentheses, and we will get to that later. So our two sentences are, helping is good, be caring students every day. These sentences will help us to remember the six parts of the letter. So let's start with our first word, helping. What do you think the H in helping represents for the business letter? Oh, I think Ms. Rule already has it. It is our heading. Awesome. And the I, everyone? The, oh, you are right on point today, the inside address. And the G. Greeting, or we can call it something else, which is another word for greeting. We can also call it greeting what? Awesome. Our greeting or our salutation. And the B in, in B, the body, yes. The C and carry, the closing, awesome. And the F in student, our signature. Now, if you notice, I have the word every day in parentheses. What, does, what do you think the word every day represents? The envelope, awesome. We do not want to forget that once we address this letter, it must be placed in an envelope, and that envelope must also be addressed. So, the six parts of the business letter. Helping is good. Be caring students every day. Heading, inside address, greeting, body, closing, signature, and every day represents our envelope. Great job. So, part number one, the heading. You should have your loose leaf in your hand, and I have one in mine. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick about keeping your, let me get to um, 
Let me get to writing our information in the heading. I'm going to show you a trick. I do not want you to write the information now as the screen is up. We're going to discuss what it is that we need to do in the heading, and then I will show you an example, and you can jot that down, or the slides will be up for you to go back to later on. So what do we do in the heading? We go to the top right-hand corner of our page, and we use our punning or index finger, and we move five spaces to the left. You can see my page. When we get to the five spaces to the left, we're going to write our PO box. Under our PO box comes the city and country. We place a comma between the city and the country. And then we write the day, day, month, year. We never abbreviate the name of the month. So which month are we in now? Uh, well, there's May, M-A-Y, no, April. What's the abbreviation for April? Does anyone know? I'm already ready to go into May. Right, we will not write APR, instead we will spell the entire name of that month. Now, we must remember too that we're going to skip a line between our city, country, and the date. And our final point is that we must keep our information aligned. Does anyone know what the word align means? What does alignment refer to? Does anyone have any idea what the word alignment refers to? Keep it straight, right under each other. Good. We do not want our heading to be staggered or looking like a puzzle piece. We want everything in one straight line. So how do we keep that aligned? We take our page, take it loosely, we're going to fold it and press it all the way down and open it and you should have a crease going down. This is going to be our invisible line that will help us to keep our heading and other parts of our, our letter aligned. If your alignment is all the examiners are looking for alignment and you will be penalized if your alignment is off. So we're going to, so we're going to fold your loose leaf and you should have a fold going down the center. So that when we put in our information, everything is right under the other. So, for example, uh, when we write our P next to our fold, the P or box, and then directly under that P next to our fold, we write Nassau, comma, the Bahamas. We can write Nassau Bahamas or Nassau the Bahamas. When someone asks you, where are you from? You are not going to answer, answer them and say, I'm from Bahamas. No. You're going to answer them and say, I'm from the Bahamas. You're not from Bahamas. You're from the Bahamas. So our PR box goes on the first line. Remember now, in the Bahamas, we do not have the luxury of our mail being delivered to our doors. Although now, some items are being delivered, but we don't have that regular luxury. We have to go to the post office to collect our mail. There are, the letters that we use for the post office, office box, refers to the area in which we are collecting our mail from. And it's for Nassau. If I were living on um, Carmichael Road, for those of you who are from Nassau, what do you think the abbreviation for my post office box would be? Carmichael Road. Can you write it in the chat box? What will be the two letters for my post office box? CR, capital CR. Not RD, that's word. CR represents Carmichael. What about Cable Beach? CD. Awesome. What if I were living in Elizabeth Estate? Awesome. Uh, e, uh, e, 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 capital E, capital E. So the letter in the PO box represents where we go to pick up our mail. I know on the family island, they have something called general delivery. 
But in Nassau, we, we go to the post office box to collect our mail. So PO box and one, two, three, right next to our phone. Underneath that P, right next to our phone, we have Nassau, comma, the Bahamas, and we skip a line right next to our phone, the 2nd of October, 2018. Now, this is an open format. Therefore, there are no punctuation marks after our, uh, in our heading. The only punctuation mark we're using is the comma between Nassau and the Bahamas. If you begin with your punctuation marks in, as in the closed format, and they're not maintained throughout, the examiner will penalize you. So if you're not comfortable using your punctuation marks and you're not comfortable with that closed style, it is recommended that you write your business letter in the open format. So part number one is complete, the heading. What is the next part of the letter that we're going to move to? Who can tell me? Helping heading is, is represents an inside address or something. So to help you remember the inside address, there's a formula I like to use. Four P's, two C's. So I'm going to explain to you what that formula represents. Because sometimes it's hard to remember how to organize the information accurately. So the inside address gives the information about the individual, organization, or company to whom you are writing. It is written one space below the heading against the left margin. So now we're moving from right to left, one space below the heading. Remember to indicate the title of the individual you are addressing, Miss, Mr., Doctor, and so on. If we were addressing your, the reverend of your church, what would his title be? Can you put it in the chat box for me? If, I, if we were writing a letter to the reverend of our church, Rev, or cap, capital letter, pastor, yeah, but you, good. So our formula, four Ps and four Ps to C. What does this mean? Person, position, place, PO box. And our two Cs are the city and country. Four Ps, two Cs. First line, first P, person. Second P, position. Third P, place. Now that place refers to the organization to whom we are writing. Our fourth P is the PO box, and then we have our two Cs, city, comma, country. Let's see what it looks like. So today, we are addressing our letter to, our person is Miss Nicolette Brown. We have our title and the complete name. So that's a person. Her position is what? Can you write it in the chat box? What is her position? Four P's, two P's, two C's. Principal, awesome. And the place that she is, or the organization she's a part of, or the place that she represents, D.W. Davis Junior High School. Then we have our PO box, N321. And then we have followed by our two C's. Nassau, comma, the Bahamas, city and country. What do you notice about the PO box in the heading and the PO box in the inside address? What did I do? Can anybody tell me what did I what I did with the PO box in the heading and the inside address? I, good, I just rearranged the numbers. Sometimes we're in examination mode, we're in the exam, we're already a little bit flustered, it's, maybe it's hot, and we, we waste time on trivial things. So what I advise to do, if you put 221, when you get down to your inside address, then you put 112. Keep it simple, keep it straightforward. Do not um, burden yourself with things that are trivial. So. Now, we have already done our heading and our inside address. No, we're not moving to the body. Who can tell me what part we're moving to now?
No. So this is where it gets different. A lot of times, uh, exam, a lot of times we find that students write the letter and then they run out of time or for whatever reason they forget. They do not address the envelope. Here's the trick. Everything other than the date that we've done so far is to be placed on the envelope. So the smart thing to do once we've done our heading and our inside address is to transfer that information minus the date directly to our envelope. So we're going to put our letter portion down for a minute and address our envelope. So once we've done our heading and our inside address, we're going to address our envelope. Which informa what information from our heading are, are we not carrying over to our envelope? Which is, what information are we leaving behind in the heading? The date. Awesome. We're not carrying that over to our envelope. So we have the writer and we have the receiver. So Bianca Jean Baptiste is writing this letter. Her PO box must remain the same as in the heading. And the city and country also remains the same. We then lift the entire inside address. We do not change anything for all high Diego. We do not feel any, we do not change anything different from the inside address. We take that inside address as it is and we lift it and we put it in the center of our envelope. We do not make any changes to the entire address. We skip a space, we move to the center of our envelope and we place the exact information from our inside address. And we do not include the date on our envelope, nor do we include two Miss Nicolette Brown from the Anchor Jane Baptiste. All we're doing is taking the heading minus the date and including your name on the first line and simply lifting the entire inside address and placing that in the center of the envelope. Is everyone following me so far? Are there any questions? You can put it in the chat box if you're following. Awesome, so we've done the heading. We've done the inside address. We've completed our envelope. We don't even have to look back at our envelope now. What part of the letter are we moving to? Helping is good. Good represents what? Our greeting or our salutation. Good. Awesome. So the greeting or salutation. There, Miss Brown, colon. We do not include the first name of the person to whom we are writing. We simply use their title and their surname because we already established who they are in the inside address. After we would have written there, we write the name of the person to whom we're addressing the, le the letter, the last name. So there, Miss Brown, colon. Go ahead and put a colon in your chat box. Now, how is this part of the business, how is this part of the business letter different from the friendly letter? What punctuation are you going to use after your greeting in the friendly letter? Who can tell me? A comma, good. Do not confuse the two. So for the friendly letter, our greeting is followed by a comma, and for the business letter or the formal letter, our greeting is followed by a colon. The greeting is placed one space under the inside address against our left margin. Remember now, our page is still folded. We still need that fold. That fold is not going to restrict us from writing any other part of our letter. It's still, it's still necessary, and we're going to get to that eventually. So how do we compose this greeting? There, Mrs. Brown, colon. It's very simple. We do not say there, Mrs. Nicolette Brown. We do not say there, Nicolette. This is a formal letter and we must treat it as such and keep it formal and professional. Okay, let's move on. If there are no questions, remember this is all going to be uploaded. So I gave you the answer. Help, right. <laughs> Helping is good. 
B, and B represents the body. Awesome. So the body of the ladder, this is our meat. This is the meat of the ladder. This is where the information or the message we are writing is placed. It is written in paragraphs beginning under the reading. And we must always remember to indent our paragraph. The body of your letter must be accurate and concise. Mr. Gibson spoke about accuracy when he spoke about run-on sentences, sentence fragments. He, he touched on accuracy yesterday with the irregular verb tenses. All of that refers to accuracy, and the examiners are looking for competent, accurate, standard English and concise. Who remembers what concise means? To keep, to do what? Keep it. Write it in your chat box if you recall what, that, what concise means, being concise. To the point, good. Not sure. Keep it simple and not short. Simple and straightforward. And, being, and keeping it simple and straightforward allows us to maintain a professional tone and, and to avoid, sometimes your parents, you like the thing that your parents are running on. Well, keeping it concise helps us to avoid running on and babbling and getting into things that are not necessary. We, are, we also want to avoid phrases such as God bless you and I love you. These phrases are not used for formal language. So we want, we're looking for accuracy and we're looking for it to be concise, keep it simple. We're also looking for paragraphing, which represents the organization of our letter. And we're going to get into that much more details tomorrow. So helping is good. B. Now let's see what this body looks like. So, I cannot see my page a lot. I'm going to have to remove my chat for a second. So, dear Ms. Brown, I'm writing to complain about the unhealthy lunch being served at D.W. Davis Junior High School. Since September 2018, my son has had to choose between the many four options given for lunch. Therefore, I'm requesting that lunch vendors provide healthy options for students. Offering students healthy meals will help them to be more alert during class after the lunch period. Wholesome meals will also decrease the amount of students seeking medical care from the school nurse as a result of stomach pain. Lastly, providing meals that are nutritious will reduce childhood obesity and promote a healthy lifestyle among students. I implore you to correct this problem by the 28th of October, 2018. We must encourage our children to eat well in order to have a healthy life. Who can tell me? Okay, the, the PowerPoint will be uploaded. You can always go back and review it. And when we meet again tomorrow, I'm going to touch on some of this on Thursday. So, who can tell me what kind, what type of business letter I am writing to Ms. Nicolette Brown, the principal of D.W. Davis? Okay, it's a for, uh, yeah, business complaint. Now, I want you to remember, whenever you are writing a complaint, it's never a complaint alone. You must complain and you must also request. So this is a letter of complaint request. With your complaint, always, there's always a request. Ms. Sophia, you have a question? Go ahead. So remember when you complain, your complaint always is always accompanied by a request. So if you look at the body of the letter. How many paragraphs can you see? Three. Good. Are my paragraphs lengthy? 
or did I keep it simple and straightforward? And I explained my problem to her. I, I gave her examples of, yes, I kept it simple. I, I explained my problem. I told her how long I had the problem. I gave her the effects of the problem. And I also made some suge made a suggestion. So now we have our Is it, has it has a frozen? Okay. Sorry about that. So now we have our heading, inside address, envelope, greeting, body. Where are we off to next? Miss Sophia, I did not see I did not see a question, but if you type it in the chat box. One of the other teachers will be happy to assist you. Yes, we're off to the closing. Awesome. Helping is good. Be caring. And caring represents the closing of the letter. So the closing. This part of the letter must be aligned with the heading. That's why we maintained our soul. So that our heading and our closing are all aligned. Can everybody see my paper? So, so we're going to ensure that our heading and our closing is a, a, they, that they are aligned. So when we get to the closing, this part of your letter must be aligned with the heading. If it is staggered, you will you will lose points in that area. We must skip a line between the body and the closing. So after we complete the last sentence of the body paragraph, we're going to have literature on Friday. So after we complete the last sentence of the body paragraph, we move to the closing and we skip one line. When you Compose your closing, you are to capitalize the first letter of your closing. A comma follows the closing. You must use a formal closing. Who can give me an example? You can write this. Yes, you can, and it will also be in, uploaded to the page. Who can give me an example of an informal closing? Your friend, awesome. Your love, your bestie, that's pretty informal. Right, your, right. So you must use a formal closing, sincerely, comma, or respectfully, comma. When you use sincerely, before you place the adverb suffix, ensure that you have the final E. That's a tricky word to spell. A lot of people tend to omit the E. When you use sincerely, be sure to include the final B before you add your adverb suffix, which is the L-Y. Let's see what the closing looks like on our letter. So now, if you look at my sample, it is all aligned. Give me to go back a bit. Where am I going back to remember this will all be uploaded this will all be uploaded so that you are able to go back and review it, go back and write it down, screenshot it, either, either one. So if you look at my sample, my clothing is in complete alignment with my heading. Do you see that? Did you see that? Can you type yes? And I want everybody to type the word sincerely with a capital S, followed by a comma into the chat box. 
F I N C E R E L Y. Do not forget your E before the L Y suffix. And if you are not confident in spelling that word, then you go right ahead, find if you use the word respectfully. Good job. You are on target and on point today. So, helping is good. Be caring. What are we going to be? Be caring whom? And students, awesome. And students represent our signature. Great. So, the signature is the full name written under the closing. The signature must be aligned with the heading and the closing. So that's why we maintain our code. So that our signature, our heading, our closing, and our signature are all in one straight line. This fold does not restrict us from writing our body. Our body flows right over the folds of the letter. I know many of you are excited to create these fancy signatures, fancy scribbles, fancy names. For your signature, we simply want your first government name and your last government name. And what would it look like on the letter? Sincerely, the anchor, Jane Baptiste. Remember, we are writing, remember the anchor wrote this letter. So we are writing her full name. And this is the name that we would have written on the envelope. Is everyone clear and is everyone following? So I want you to go ahead and pretend that you would have written this letter, and I want you to write two parts for me. Write your closing and your signature. Go ahead and put those in the chat box. Remember to spell whichever closing you choose, and remember to use the appropriate, no, put, put your closing and your signature one under the other. Don't separate it, put it in one message. Remember, it goes one under the other, so you may have to press enter on your device. That may be a little tricky for those of us using a cell phone. Jazara, you cannot just write. Good job, Ms. Fraser. Jazara, you want to put your complete name. Jazara Copley, Jazara Rose, Jazara Mortimer, whatever Jazara's last name is. Remember to capitalize your name as well. So, let's go back a bit to our thought, sorry, we want to go back. Let's put on our thinking cap and think about everything that we discussed today. Let's recap. Time is winding up on us pretty quickly. A business letter has six parts. What are the two sentences that we're going to use to help us remember those six parts? Heading, inside address, greeting, body, closing, signature. What, what are the two sentences that we're going to use to help us to remember those six parts of the business or formal letter? Can anyone tell me? Heading, inside address, greeting, body, closing, signature. What are those two? Helping is good. That's our first sentence. Be caring students. Awesome. Helping is good. Be caring students. And what are we going to put after students in parentheses or in brackets? Not every, every day, not every one. And every day is going to represent what? 
not our name. Yes, every day will represent the envelope. Now, when we are writing our letter, the first part we're going to write is our heading, followed by, by our inside address. What are we going to do once we've done our heading and our inside address? Are we going to move to our greeting, or will we then go to the... We're going to go to the envelope. And why are we going to our envelope? What is the reasoning behind that? Not to end it. Not, not, not to end it. Think about it. I mentioned it earlier. No. What are we doing with the information in our heading and our inside address? We're simply doing what? We're simply lifting that information and placing it on the envelope. Minus one detail. What detail are we not going to include on the envelope? The date. However, we are going to include the sender's name in the heading. Now, inside address, four P's, two C's. Can someone tell me what that formula represents? Four P's, two C's. In order. That we have to remember that formula in order. I see it coming in for that. First same position, place, PO box, right, city, country. Awesome, Miss Ellis. First same position, place, good job. First same position, place, PO box, city, country. We must remember that the date will not be included in the envelope and the information in our body must be written in paragraphs for organization and it must be accurate and concise. And concise meaning what? Good, simple and straightforward. And we must also maintain a formal tone. What are some examples of an informal tone? What can cause our tone to become informal? What is something that we can, we can include in our, God, God bless you, God bless you, good, that will, I love you, awesome, awesome job. So if we include those and awesome, that will change the tone of our letter and cause it to become informal and we want to maintain a formal tone because we are writing a formal letter. And finally, we want to achieve alignment. And alignment means what? What does alignment mean? Keep everything lined up. We want awesome. We, want, we don't want it to be staggered, one right under the other. We want to keep our heading, our closing, and signature all aligned. You have done an awesome job today. Tomorrow, I know this is a lot of information today, but tomorrow we're going to revisit it and we're going to look at a specific kind of business letter. But before we do that, what format did we look at today? What format of the business letter did we focus on today? What, what format did we look at today? Who remembers the format? It's a formal, but what format of the formal letter did we use? And there's a letter of complaint, but what not a plain format. We use that open format. You remember you have, I don't know if your teachers may have taught you a closed, some of you may have learned a closed format in which you would use punctuation marks straight through. And this is now the open format where there are no punctuation marks in our heading and inside address. So this is the open format. Tomorrow we're going to continue with the open format, but we are going to write, going to focus on a letter of complaint tomorrow. 
what what information should be included 